Hey, it's a Friday yeah. edition here Woo! on Zero Block 30. And today we have four rounds in the magazine. Round number one. We're going to get into it. Uh, let me pull up the thing. It's not. It's harder to do it on my phone. Round number one. If you're active duty, has Big Brother been spying on your social media accounts? Do they know you had a, something a little sexist back in 2011? Or that you've been active? Oh, Kate. What? On our long boobs? That's a direct shot at me. Yeah. yeah. I love our, our long boobs. Right. Well, yeah, Kate and I were looking through our... Well, we weren't really looking through it together. But we were talking about it. Then I pulled it up. The original long boobs Reddit site. And they shut that fucker down. Yeah, well, now it's long, probably, our long titties. Probably rightfully so. And it's got to hurt just your mentals to be like, I'm going to be, I'm going to put myself out there on our long boobs to see if I fit in or not. Because mm. you're just like feeling self-conscious about your tits. And then when people are like, oh no, these belong here. Yeah, if you get upvoted in our long boobs. Because I think secretly you would put it in there and hope people are like, oh, these titties no, aren't even yeah, that long. No, yeah, your boobs aren't like, long these, enough. They don't even rate to be in here. Right. Can anyone start a subreddit? Titties. Yeah, I yeah. think so. Yeah. So. They do. That's why there's a million I'm just, of them. Yeah, I'm just saying, could you just restart it? But what if round, you had to get it approved? Oh, God. Well, then you'd know for real. But round number one is, is the military, is the DOD spying on military members. It L is. Long story yeah. short. We're going to get into the actual long story booby of short. what happened, but they're spying <laughs> yeah. on you guys. Round number two, crickets for Biden. And no, we're not talking about the new White House family pets. Right. We're talking about... <laughs> So we went with insects jokes there. Because you got crickets. You try to tell a joke at a right. graduation. You got crickets. Yeah. Everybody knows when you have to explain a joke, it's then really it's good. good. Yeah. Because his dog got mm. kicked out of the White yeah. House. So, so they got a major pain. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and round number three, uh, porta potty art, specifically the phallic sort, a rare bastion of self-expression in the military. And we've got the story of a veteran and artist who's turning that into medium into a living. They're very good. The phallic art that he's yeah, doing? the patches yes. and everything. They're, They're fantastic. fantastic. And finally, round number four, you thought that being the color guard or I guess this would be the guide, like the guide on bearer, you think that that is always like an easy job in battle? Mm. It wasn't in the Civil War. Mm -mm. One fella got a Medal of Honor for what he Whoa. did. That makes sense, though. You're out there in front, first one. Yeah. But I, mean, I don't know how much you're doing. I can't wait to hear this story because I don't know what you're doing with the guide on that's heroic. He didn't really do a whole lot with it. I think it's they were still, a little more. It's still pretty. Listen, I mean, it would be cool if you had it and you stabbed somebody to death That's what with I'm talking about. On. Yeah. That'd like you great. turn that into a weapon of opportunity. Or you wrap the flag part of it around their neck. Well, the top part. Yeah, that would be Or good if they too. had some or like, you, you know, streamers. The top part is legit like a spear. Yes. So like if you have that and yeah. you stab somebody, imagine that. Like you come back to your first time and you're like, oh, you stabbed a guy. Or yeah, you set the flag great. on fire and Chaps you go running through. The other ranks of the other people setting them all on fire. There's a lot of ways you can kill someone with a flag. Uh, probably. You just sure. suggest lighting people on fire? Uh, hey, stay not, still while I light I'm, you on I'm fire. I didn't raise a bitch. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. And all of that is going to be brought to you by our good friends at Simply Safe. Um, I'm. Should we do F? I'm kind of thinking Big Time Tommy. Yeah, you were doing a little Big, big Time Tommy. Big Time Tom beforehand. Okay, do, do you have a neighbor going. who's doing dangerous things with a, with a guide on with a flag? You should get Simply Safe. I don't know. I mean, I think it could work there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but Simply Safe is an award winning security system. So you know it's engineered with the latest technology you want to keep your family safe. But what really sets Simply Safe apart is its people highly trained security experts who are always there to help you when you need them the most. There are people who truly care about keeping you safe. When an alarm goes off, a person who cares is there for you with a phone call to make sure you're okay. Because that's the old school way. When an emergency happens, a person who cares for you is there by setting, getting fire and police, the first responders to your door right away. It's one of the many reasons the U.S. News recently called Simply Safe the best home security of 2021 because they're keeping you safe the old school way. Simply Safe for life dot com slash zbt today to get a 60-day risk-free trial so there's nothing to lose os for life take it easy imagine doing that voice wow. for a full seven episodes for an hbo miniseries couldn't do it and they <laughs> talk about it. how drill instructors lose their voices that's like a slow and relaxed new york drill instructor voice <laughs> well, it I, really is. I try to do my own com app <laughs> version yeah. of that yeah. like yeah so what you're doing you're trying to let your eyelids become very 
very heavy. Light your cigar slowly. Put on your old school music, your freestyle music. (laughs) Turn it up in your Cadillac right now. All right, let's get going with the actual show because we are here again in New York. We're all together. Catherine is here. Yes, I am here. Yeah, how are you feeling back, like getting back in the swing of work? I'm feeling good. Also, our new producer is here at Nick B Media. You can follow him on Twitter. And uh, it's nice to have the whole squad here for the first time. So this is really cool. I'm doing good. Can I say one kind of awkward thing? Yes. It's on me that it's awkward because everyone here is an adult. But we have a a breast pump room here at Barstool Sports. Mm -hmm. Now, is this a just a room that we use for a lot of things that you've dubbed the breast pump room or it's been no, identified said, as the breast pump room? They actually set it up for Kate and put, brought in, well, Kate and another woman who recently had a baby as well. Yeah. And they like blacked out, like put out tent where you can't see through it or anything. Like all, like it's a dedicated cool. breast pump room. Yeah, it's upstairs. It was one of the phone rooms. Okay. One of the, we have these like little phone booth rooms. Got so they it. just blacked out the windows. Got it. I didn't she know has what like you meant. her own key. It's Kate's room. Yeah, it's cool. my room. And so I don't know if the other lady, I don't know what the deal is. I haven't seen it. So it's like right now I'm considering it mine. Okay, it's you my turf. You should battle over it. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. Well, so anyway, it's just a little awkward. I'm, go- I'm like, man, everybody knows. It's like when you're walking across an outpost with your wag bag that's full of poop, and it's like everybody knows I have poop in this bag, and I'm about to throw it in the fire. I'm about to go hey, for it. Hey, what you got? Yeah. Poop again. <laughs> bag's looking kind of heavy, Kate. You know? and What'd you have to eat last night? But like yeah. walking to the pump room with my Good bag, I'm like. you and your fiber situation, Kate. Yeah, well Thank done. you. I know. Oh, a girl can goodness. eat. That girl can eat. Damn. <laughs> Uh, like you strike me as someone who was embarrassed to tell your parents you were pregnant because then that I would have then told them that you did something with in a Pat. well in a beach house that they were like 12 <laughs> feet below us yeah that's that is that is wrong that'll and never stop being awkward yeah, every time they look weird. at their grandson in a loft with no door yeah that was <laughs> saying it out loud really puts a perspective on it oh uh, sorry i'm sorry anyway. mom and dad anyways it's awkward like walking through but with like everybody knows, I'm about to pull my tits out in there, mm-hmm. and I'm about to milk them. What? That's fucking weird. I right? think that's like and nobody thinks about it that way. No, because everybody's <laughs> yeah. an adult. They're like, well, yeah, you guys, Kate went up there, <laughs> milking. <Yeah. laughs> I'll go one step further. I bet you either one of two things: no one notices, or if they do, they just only think about it for a second. It's like when you go to a bar by yourself or the movies by yourself, and you swear everyone's looking at me. They're all thinking, "Wow, what a loser!" And as soon as you realize, "Wow, nobody actually cares." Nobody at all, cares. It's like eating dinner by yourself. Yes. All right. Yes. And it's like in the guy in Jurassic Park when Newman's like, "See, no one cares." Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's Dotson. We got dots in here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Milk milking herself. We got it's milking herself here. <laughs> well, anyway, I felt like awkward going up in there, and this was the first day I used the room, and Barstool Sports is not like i'm not surprised like breastfeeding rooms are supposed to have like certain things in them to make things like a little cozy or whatever but i'm the first person ever here to do it so it's whatever so i was like texting chaps because i was like i feel kind of awkward i have this thing of milk and these pump parts and stuff because even though you're required to by law had to have like certain things you don't want to be like "Eh, you guys actually don't have everything when you're trying you know like there is a and you i could tell like through your text message you're like the company is trying to do everything yes. possible, right? They just don't know. Right, exactly. And so I was like, I wish they had a mini fridge in here because I feel awkward oh, walking okay. downstairs and putting my breast milk in the fridge with everyone else's stuff kind Wait, of thing. I'm sorry, you're putting your breast milk like in the fridge in the kitchen? Well, if there's no other fridge, right? Then what do okay, I do? gosh. So oh, I texted Chaps. I was like, I feel kind of awkward doing that, even though I have this separate bag that I brought that whatever. I just feel awkward walking through the office, like, and then like cleaning off my pump parts and the whatever. So I texted Chaps. I wish they had a mini fridge in here. And two minutes later, I'm leaving the room and I hear Chaps. <gasps> He's, he had dragged out of the green room where like celebs and stuff wait. He <laughs> stole the mini fridge, dragged it up the stairs and brought it to the breastfeeding pump room for me. Thank you. Somebody is yeah. going to get in a lot of trouble because somebody's <laughs> going to think some young producer took that mini fridge to their home. <laughs> And they're going to lose their mind. And, and somebody's going to get well, yelled at. Well, I told the, the powers that be that order the equipment. I was like, look, I took this mini fridge. I put it up there in case okay. you're okay. Yeah. So they know it's there. But it was funny. I got Chaps was playing it cool. Like, no big deal. It was no big deal. I Did brought you it carry up it up the stairs? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why yeah. didn't you just use the elevator? Because if you're going up there. Like, you know, why would I do that? Like, just getting in the elevator. But I could tell it was, like, way heavier that, than he. It was heavier than I want, than I anticipated. But then, like, bring it out and wait for the elevator. That would have made me feel like a bitch. So I just picked it up and took it up there. But I'm just saying it made me think of, like, good leadership being like, hey, ah, I feel weird about this thing. I feel awkward about this thing. And him being like, I got a solution. I'm taking care of it right now. 
And you did, and that was a delight. Now I got a bunch of booby milk just chilling up there in the little fridge. Well, because I've been dad for a while, and I know yeah. when mom needs something, she doesn't you need gotta, it in a couple of weeks. She, need, she needs it now. Like, so, like going up there. And I know anybody who listens to Zero Blog 30, Barstool Sports Military Podcast, wants to hear about breast milk and pumping immediately on a Friday episode. So well, I'm glad we got that up. buckle up because Kate's back. That's what we're going to actually start out every episode with. Yeah. <laughs> How are your Kate. nipples? I'll, I'll <laughs> pump us up on a Friday. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you got to absolutely know it. But there is a lot of things that are actually going on in the military world, one of which, I don't know, Kate. Hmm. I don't know. Round number one, what do we got? We got, this is from Task and Purpose, Jeff Schoke, I always say this wrong, Skogel. There we go. The Pentagon's top spokesman issued a full-throated denial of a story by The Intercept, which reported the DOD wants to monitor troops' social media accounts for evidence of ties to extremism. So basically, Big Brother's watching all the people in the military's mm-hmm. social accounts. First of we all, actually got the audio of him saying it full-throated. Yeah, it's a wow. full-throated denial. Mm-hmm. Here's exactly. the audio of that. Those There's no effort inside extreme. this extremist working group. That's full throat. To somehow spy on every individual. Is, it, is that full throat cookie monster? Is that cookie monster? <laughs> Do me want social oh, media. Cookie Come monster on. with Yoda and Elmo? A little? <laughs> <laughs> That's full throated. Oh, wow. That's. Well, <laughs> anyways, okay. so John Kirby said at a Pentagon news conference this isn't about some sort of surveillance program of our own people. I would contend it is. I would say it's exactly what it that's is. Exactly. A little bit it's of not it like, what do you think? You're doing? We're monitoring their social media while we're monitoring their social media? No. no. Like, you're going to tell me you're not going to, oh, just maybe peruse their yeah. browsing history. And, and this is one where we could have used our guy Kyle because mm. Kyle is a big time Fourth Amendment. They're watching me through the Patriot Act doing all this stuff. Mm-hmm. stuff. I completely agree with Kyle in this situation because there's so many – People who care about specific amendments only. Yes. We got a lot of those fuckers. Yes. Oh. Improvise, adapt, overcome. Keep it moving. Oh, we got a fire alarm? I don't know. Some weird sound out there. I don't okay, know. some weird stuff's going on. Okay. But you have so many people care only about the second. Some people only care about the first. Rank the groups of the worst people who care about an amendment to the to the weekend. All right, stomach you. Okay. Um, I would say probably... The people who were the prohibitionists, that's probably the worst one. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Now, can you imagine how obnoxious those people were? Actually, you guys aren't allowed to drink because we got rid of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like that's Having annoying. that as an amendment to the Constitution. First Amendment people, anyone who talks about First Amendment on social media, like that's a violation of my First Amendment rights, nine times out of ten times they don't understand what the First Amendment's about. Like a private company can ban you from saying whatever the fuck they want mm-hmm. to. That has mm-hmm. nothing to do with the First Amendment at all. Mm-hmm. Right. So those people are pretty bad. And then obviously you're super, if you're going out and doing like open carry at the courthouse, you're probably a huge fucking loser. Yeah, you're a bit of a (laughs) douchebag. I actually hate Third Amendment people. The Third Amendment group, no quartering of soldiers. Right. Because we all, what if I need a place to crash? What what if I'm somewhere and I need a couch? Exactly. Hit the road, Jack. And you're like, absolutely not. No, those Third Amendment people mm-hmm. I really don't like. I'm a big Amendment XVI person. I don't know what that is in real numbers. But Excuse me? What is it? That's Congress shall have the power to lay and collect taxes on incomes, et cetera, et cetera. This is one for taxes. My Aunt Peggy, who makes a good chicken parm, she was in the IRS for a long time. Was she really? She's got a sick boat. And I think that's all thanks to taxes. So I'm big. You think Aunt Peg was doing some nefarious stuff? She had a lot of long weekends. They don't call her Party Peg because she's lame. Call her party Peg because she wasn't doing a little crime goofing. Anyway. Uh, so sorry. this story comes out, and it's essentially because they have had so many issues with this extremism in the DOD. I don't, don't want to say so many, but there's been yeah. more than you would like. And so they're hiring this outside agency, essentially, to monitor all active duty people for certain keywords that you are going to get flagged for if you say some keywords. What did they say what those keywords are? Well, so this is the thing the the crux of the story here is that the DOD is saying, no, this isn't true. It's something that the Intercept and the New York Post are saying. But the DOD is saying this is misreporting, that there's actually no pilot program being run or. I'm uh, actually relieved that they use misreporting instead of fake news. I, yeah, wish, yeah, I, I yeah. wish fake news would just stop being a term. Yes. Or I, we should retire that one and let it, it die. Just, now it just means I don't like that. Right. Exactly. Yeah. They Apparently there was like a countering extremism working group developing a program to closely monitor what service members say on social media, looking for those key words. Um, but yeah, again, 
the government saying, no, 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 we're not doing that. There's no pilot program being run or the extremist working group to examine social media, Kirby told reporters. And if you see an account following you named at not the DOD, it's mm-hmm. like totally not us. <laughs> <laughs> Who added that part? Who added that <laughs> funny <laughs> sentence? What goofball? Uh, but yeah, so actually not a thing that's happening. Or is it? I probably, it's got to be. And I think it's smart to do it. Like mm-hmm. people are like, oh, this is a violation of First Amendment rights. No, it's not. It's a public it's very public what you're saying. If your name and image is attached to your like social media profile, then what you're putting out is public. Like it should be known and if you're being racist or an extremist, maybe that is something that they should flag. Well, what they yes. were saying is that military services when they're looking at potential recruits, they tend to look at social media activities as part of the enlistment yeah, process. It's a job application. Yeah, and so online vetting they are trying to figure out the best way to do it and to do it right way and they also know people use aliases and all sorts of stuff to do content on social media but that there's so many people in the military there's no way they could effectively and efficiently search the internet on the hundreds of thousands of people each year to do that sort of background i think it'd be different if you're like okay there's lance corporal johnson and we're gonna fucking assign somebody just watch everything that he tweets like Mm -hmm. if you're doing that type of surveillance but if you're running keyword searches on actual ones and i do think it would be different if you're running um a profile that one is anonymous and you're not using your image or anything related to the dod and you're not saying that you're a dod member you're just tweeting whatever the fuck you want in that certain instance i think you should be able to Mm -hmm. but if your face is there and you're like hey i'm captain cons and i am talking about actually i think the civil war was just about states rights and you're like going into all the reason why maybe slavery was good not that you would ever say that oh my gosh. but you're doing that type of thing and your yeah. face is there people associate you with the military yeah dude fuck out yeah like, you don't yeah. have the right to do that no yeah. you're right and i mean there's probably some constitutional rights attorney who could talk to you about the nuances oh, of we're the not going to get into that no we're not going to no, get into that we what, are the experts yes so but what i was going to say was mm-hmm. i think you're right in if you're putting stuff out into the ether into the internet public domains then you 100% should be monitored for these keywords. Got it. Now, if they say, all right, we're going to start like hacking into people's private computers and searching that, then obviously that's a bridge too far. But for what they're doing here, I think it's okay. Yeah. 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 Peasy peasy. Have you guys ever had anything embarrassing that you're doing? Because I would hate too for the DOD to be looking at me when I was in and things that I was doing and looking at and be like, wow. She's yeah, really that would into, be uh, like if you were looking at shit like where I was on a plane once. Or no, that was a different story. That was when I showed the whole plane my wife's boobs and stuff. Right. Yeah. Um, that, that was, was a an different accident. time. Yeah. Open up because we live separately. Yeah. And mm-hmm. she lived in Mississippi. I lived in Virginia. Keeps the spark alive. And she, so she would send me um, pictures. Tasteful. Mm. And I had a nice folder that was dedicated to them. Well, I hadn't used my computer for a while, opened it up on a plane to go to our honeymoon. <laughs> and as soon as I did, you know, like you plug in your phone. It used to be, I don't know if iPhone does this anymore, but you used to plug in your phone. And as soon as you did it, iPhotos would pop up. Like oh, the, God. So you'd no. have iPod. Yeah. yeah. So it would be like, I you really, want to take photos yeah. off your phone? I don't think it does that I don't think it does anymore. that anymore. I haven't plugged the phone into a computer yeah. in ages, but I don't think it does But anymore. I needed to charge my phone. And when I did it, that was the last folder that was open on my iPhotos <laughs> was my special photo. Yeah. And so I put it in and I was talking to Annalise and just opened it up my computer and was talking to her. And she was like, oh, my God. And I just slammed it. She's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> and she, I was like, what? She's like, you literally just showed my entire butthole to a 747. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Mm. Hell yeah. Uh, <laughs> There was that time I was in a, uh, a trivia competition and got absolutely destroyed. That was pretty embarrassing. Mm-hmm. Um, no, but then there was another time uh, many, many years ago. I was at a job and I had a work laptop and I, a friend of mine was over one night and he's like, hey, can I look something up? He was looking something up on an adult website and then he closed it out. Okay. I had to present the next day at work. So I open up and they're like, oh, well, go to this site. And like before I could even type anything, like the first letter I typed – that one, that website was the first mm-hmm. one to show up. Like Pornhub or something, you porn. Yes, some and, and, and it was like, of course, I was like, oh, sorry, yeah, my friend used my computer. Uh, Everyone's the like, old oh, likely my story. Friend. Likely Whoa. story. Yeah. I was like, old my friend. And it's, and it's terrible yeah. when it's the URL. Dog ate my homework. Because if it just went, like, if it just went, when you did that, the autocorrect, if it just went to Pornhub's homepage, and it was just like Pornhub.com. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, dude, I fucking look at porn. So what? Yeah. But it's when, like, 
school teacher slips and falls directly onto a fat dildo like and that's part of the <laughs> url like, yeah. too mm-hmm. it's a little different it slaps a little bit harder yeah, i don't mind people knowing i look at porn i talk about it all the time i have owen gray oh wow i haven't talked about owen gray in yeah. so long oh Memories. my favorite porn star oh, yeah. but i don't want people to see the specific searches i don't think anybody does no like, <laughs> no definitely yeah. not honest to god yeah, like no. worst night if somebody did that to you <laughs> imagine how diabolical that would be if somebody got your porn <laughs> searches. like searches and yeah. then just posted it and like anytime you t- you know how that one dude used to constantly if dave tweeted like the traffic cone is one like traffic cone needs assistant or the dodge ram dude that's like why don't you get a dodge ram that would really help you out yeah if you had that but there was a <laughs> reply guy that just pus- posted your most recent porn like urls that you went to that would be horrifying if you couldn't stop it yeah, I agree. I couldn't agree more. Well, anyways, hopefully the government's that. not looking at yeah. If they do that, we're all the way. That out. long tangent yes. must tell you the government's not looking at your specific. We don't want searches. you to be racist. Fine, look into that. You, we don't want you to be horny. We can't abide. No. We want you Bonk. guys to be horny right. and ladies. Well, you know, and also I want you to be comfortable in the privacy of your own home, even if it is the barracks. Right. Mm-hmm. However, however, let me let me throw a little wrench in this situation. A wrench like they talk about on Spit and Jacklets or a different type of wrench? A different type of wrench. Okay. A wrench like you might use on long-time toolies. Mm-hmm. Okay. What if you are on a government-issued computer? Now, is that fair to look at anything and everything well, yeah, that you are doing boss. on a government yes, computer? Yes, of course. Yeah. Okay, I'm just asking. Yeah. Well, just there's asking. Barstool laptops, the only laptop I have. And I believe Barstool has the right to like look at your email. Like any Most companies, I think they can look through my emails if they wanted to. They have to give you... They have like to tell you up. that they are going to and that they have the ability whenever you sign up for your – Yeah. Like, if they're going to do that, they have to tell you. Like but, like – Michael this... Scott happened to him, and he was like – they're like, oh, why are you looking at your emails? What, what, what? You guys are crazy. We're <laughs> yeah. not doing that. We just got an email that said that you were. Well, so, like, this is my only computer, so I've been looking up so much stuff about, like, breastfeeding and nipples and, like, all this stuff, and it's all on oh, my man. work computer. Why don't you give that and be like, Big Ev has been on my computer, <laughs> and ever since he's been using it, some weird shit's been yeah. happening. Anyway, uh, that was a faster and loose story on the, is the DOD looking at military members' stuff? Yeah. Who knows? Don't worry we don't about know. it. No I think this deal. is also just a, a scenario where, you know, the DOD is adapting with the times, mm-hmm. and I, I appreciate that. I mean, it's a lot better than what they were doing, just being like, oh, yeah, we do have these white supremacists. Right. Guys, yeah. But there's yeah. not a whole lot we can do eye. about it. Yeah. yeah. I'd yeah. much rather you be proactive and figure out how to do that than not. All right. Let's move on to round number two. This one, poor Biden, man. Like, I think <sighs> Biden. This was bad. It was. Like, and the video of it is so. It's cringy. Like, because you could tell Biden whenever he was younger, like, and you look at clips of him, even in like his 60s and 70s, like earlier 70s. He was always like the charming guy. Mm-hmm. Like he reached where he was at in the Senate, not because he's like some unbelievable litigator, or lawyer, or anything like that, but because he formed relationships and made relationships Charisma. because he was. And he's like sure. everybody's grandpa, like mm-hmm. the next door neighbor that might say some inappropriate things from time to time. He might sniff your hair. Like, yeah, he might sniff your he might hair. Sit on your lap. Just do some weird shit and be old. Like <laughs> right. that he might, might hug you a little gets. too long. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's sad because the quick wittedness. I think is one of the first things to go (laughs) Yeah. like whenever you're and when you're that person like him, it's tough. And that shit was on full ass display. Yeah. So President Joe Biden mirrored former Florida Governor Jeb Bush's awkward please clap moment as he addressed the U.S. I'd say it's worse. Uh, Yeah. This is painful because you're actually president. Yeah. Yeah. He was addressing the U.S. Coast Guard Academy's graduating class of 2021. And it's making the news because after one of his jokes flopped, he said, you're a really dull class. Come on, man. Is the sun getting to you? And before we go any further, let's hear what that joke was. I can only assume that you will enjoy educating your family about how the Coast Guard is, quote, the hard nucleus around the Navy forms in times of war. You are quite, you're a really dull class. I mean, come on, man. Is the sun getting to you? I would think you'd have an opportunity when I say that about the Navy to clap. But but being here together. So, yeah, he said how the Coast Guard is the hard nucleus around the Navy in times of war. 
Was that the joke? Was that? I yeah. don't understand. Like, I don't even understand the joke, it. it was just so bad. It wasn't. I just pictured Rocco from Boondock Saints. Funny, fucking funny, <laughs> yeah. funny. It just was so not funny. Yeah, because think of it. At Coast Guard, Coast Guard gets jokes all the time. Yes. So yeah. those folks, they're not in the mood for fucking coasty jokes whenever they're sitting there at graduation, even though it's supposed to be at the Navy. They yeah. just want to get through it. Mm-hmm. And the worst, one of the worst parts of that clip, I can hear my type of person giving him the pity laugh. Yes. There's like a few second pause and then a couple people like, ah, ha, ha, Especially ha. since these are our new active duty officers and that's their boss. <laughs> yeah, so they're going to laugh anyway. During his 25 minute plus speech, also brutal in the hot sun, keep it to 10 to 15 at the most. Oh, no, right. no. These guys, they talk for a while. Terrible. I, um, I hate that. President Bush's speech, I think he spoke for like 40 minutes, but it was a great speech. He made some good jokes too. But that you're actually in a hard spot if you're the president and you're going to a service academy because mm. like if you only go up there and speak for 10 minutes, like, oh, you couldn't prepare a longer speech right. for this. Yeah. Yep. 30 minutes, you're like, oh, right, dude, we fucking get it. You like your job. Got yeah, that. sheesh. <laughs> well, he also admitted that he needed absolution after his college years at the University of Delaware. I used to party there underage, got my uh, fake oh, yeah. ID That's taken the there. Fight, by the way. Delaware That's a lot the fighting too. hens, right? Yeah. Uh, the the only hens. woman mask Scott. Anyway, oh. yeah, for minor infractions like using a fire extinguisher to hose down an RA, he Whoa, said. Oh, you're actually, wild, Joe. That's actually pretty cruel, you're isn't wild. it? Hey, nerd, spraying an RA <laughs> with. I, I actually, uh. That was one of my biggest regrets for how I've treated somebody in my life. My ex girlfriend, the same one that I broke up with her when she tried to show me them pancake titties. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> this, her father hated me, and with good reason. Like, we were all goofing around after a baseball game. And they had left some of the buses open. I hopped on the bus. She was in the bus. Two of the other friends were. I was like, well, let's get nuts with this fire extinguisher. So I start shooting it off. She runs out. I chase her with it, like thinking we're all just having a good time, Mm -hmm. not hearing her saying, I can't, I legit can't breathe. And then I like spray her while she's in her fucking Mustang car. And then I go out and I, I just thought I'd go inside the car. Oh yeah. And I didn't know, I didn't know what a fucking fire extinguisher shot. I thought it was just air. Right. And like that it, it's not, and there's like all kinds of chalk and whatever the fuck is in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, so she has to take it back to her car. Her dad called me and he was like, you better be at my house in 15 minutes or you'll never see my daughter ever again. Oh, God. Oh, no. And I had to go in there and I was like vacuuming. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't know that this was going to do this. I apologize. I am a piece of shit. Oh, he should have so kicked bad. my ass, honestly. Mm. Well, but it would have been well within his right. Biden would be in the same boat with you. He, I guess he was trying to yuck it up with them by telling them he was a goofball once and he sprayed an RA with a fire extinguisher. Oh, you're wild. Again, I don't he's, know how many laughs that's got. He's a new uh, speechwriter, I guess, because that, that's really just... Well, terrible. he probably has, like, really good speechwriter, but he I, he seems like the dude that wants to be goofing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, he's yeah. like, oh, we need to lighten this up. They've, they're going to they're gonna want to have some jokes there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I luckily for you, I do have some coasty jokes for you oh, that are going to hit. I found a website that has nothing but uh, you might be a coasty if. Yes, and I see there is a the, full page of these. A full page, page of these. I'm so excited. don't you worry. <laughs> Obviously, going off the you might be a redneck if. Sure. The old Jeff Foxworthy treatment here. Shouts to smarter than a fifth All right. Grade. Everybody listening, get ready to laugh. Can you do your best Jeff Foxworthy voice? I don't remember what he sounds like. You might be a redneck okay. if. Okay. You might be a coasty if. You know that. You know instantly that work smarter, not harder, means billet cuts. No idea what that means. You might be a coasty if you proceed every public speech with, I was going to tell a sea story, but seeing the lack of Cutterman's pins out there, you all just wouldn't understand. Okay. Jesus. You, you might be a coasty if you are still trying to figure out what TQ Hem was all about. I'm now, I'm, I'm better understanding why Biden flopped. You, you might be a coasty if you've ever laughed when watching the CG commercial at 3 a.m. and wondered why all they show is helos and small boats. Uh, <clears throat> There's another page you, of these. Just you so might be ready. a coasty if you hear an HH65 and don't look up. <laughs> You you might be a coasty if any time you set out on a trip you expect to hear make preparations for getting underway. <laughs> you might be a coasty if when you come home with groceries you shout all hands lay to the garage driveway curb for stores. <laughs> you, what? you might Jesus be a, <laughs> Christ. You might be a, these are real from these the are, website. I want to read some too. Okay. I want to see if I can do it in a way and make Kate laugh. <laughs> okay. You might be a coasty if you catch yourself speaking to your children in the same tone of voice you used with your non-rates. Or is it the other way around? 
<laughs> you might be a coasty if you're getting to sleep after mid watch was getting difficult due to the ever present <laughs> sun up above throwing your system off. Someone really wrote these thinking they were funny. Mm. If your ship is handed a list of businesses, your crew is not welcome at during their port call. That's pretty common. That's pretty that's, common. That's, that's silly. Yeah. That could have been a joke. Uh, yeah. What? Keep going. There's only 15 more. <laughs> okay. You left a port. You left port with more than one sign from the naval base. <laughs> <laughs> oh. WMEC I don't means even know what M- WMEC. we must eat chicken to you. What does that even mean for real? I don't know. Oh Coast Guard. God. There's a lot more of these. Basically, what I'm trying to get at is maybe it is not Biden's fault. Maybe the Coast Guard is just not funny. Yeah. Because these are it's very possible. not funny. If you're in the Coast Guard and you're listening. And What's you, the best? Because we know like you have U.S. Army what the fuck moments. You have Terminal Lance. What was Air the, Force, Fast, Neat, and Below fast Average. Neat. What it would be the Coast Guard version? Is there one? I don't know that there is. If, I haven't seen one. If there is, I need to get it. Because the Barstool I, I Coast see it. Guard account is funny. They're good. Yeah. They're funny, but I mean, my goodness, that was this. These were rough jokes to read. I just don't understand it. <laughs> but what anyway, if, because Biden's been in politics for so long, and that he's had people just kind of sucking up to him on his staff for so long that he forgot how to be funny. Maybe if he was funny when he was younger, but if you have forty years of people just laughing at your jokes, even when they're not funny, do you know, lose Barack your sense Obama's of humor? pretty funny. Yeah, no, he's like still when funny. He goes in, Bush is funny. Bush is funny. He said at uh, at our graduation because I guess the, the our superintendent at the time he had an old car that he kept with him after like thirty years. A couple students stole it, spray painted it, graffitied it all up, and he would still drive it around all around campus and show up to sports games, sports games, sporting mm-hmm. events in this car. I was like, oh, the soup's here, good, good stuff. And President Bush said, now I saw what you all did to the superintendent's car. Better stay the heck away from Marine One. <laughs> and the way he that delivers is. it, that's yeah, funny. That's a good one. Yeah. I mean, he has good one-liners all yeah. the time. Like when he was talking about the invasion into Afghanistan, and he's like, that being said, now watch this drive. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then he goes up there and rips like a 300-yard yeah. drive. Right. Yeah. You can't teach that. I don't know if Uncle Joe has that anymore. He might not have any more. And there's nothing worse than bombing. As someone who used to do stand-up, uh, oh, my God. There were times where you just want to like – Oh, I thought we were transitioning to a different topic because no. you said there's nothing worse than bombing. I oh, like, did, nothing. did I miss some news? No, no, no. Yeah. Speaking of <laughs> well, new that's conflict in the there's Middle East. Nothing worse than bombing. Yeah. Anyways, here's our next story about Al Shabaab. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yikes. A lot of death. Uh, Just doing some Al Shabaab goofing. But we do have some. Um, we do have some big bomb. Big. Big dicks Balls. in the next big, one. And yeah, if you want uh-huh. a big thing of meal prep, you might want to go with our friends <laughs> at Trifecta Nutrition. It's the best meal prep on earth. All their plans are created by chefs and nutritionists to help people get into the best shape of their lives. I will say, being around the office, people have been complimenting me left and right about my weight loss. Wow, and on the, the internet. Loss. I've been getting Love. DM saying it's you're having a handsome chap summer. I know. Looking it's, skinny. It's ridiculous. Uh, but you don't have to suffer to eat healthy. You can be like me and get there just by having some delicious mood for our food from our friends at Trifecta Nutrition. Make sure that you're getting the quality food, which is their priority. It's fresher food from the farm to the fork supply chain. Never frozen organic produce. Gluten-free. Meat that is animal welfare level five, the highest possible. So those chickens must be Whoa. free ranging like all over the joint. Living mm. better than I did when I lived in a studio here. Mm-hmm. Right. They have an app to help you track your nutrition and meals. Make sure that you get it by going to trifectanutrition.com with the promo code 040. 040, you're going to get 40% off your meal prep with the code 040. Make sure you check that out. Round number three. Also, I want to say before we get into this round, We need people to send art. Kate was talking about her room that she has to continue the sustenance needed for her child. Pump room. Pump room. We also want you to send in the best porta potty art that you have. Anytime you see a good porta potty art, you need to send it to us on the Zero Block 30 page. DM it to us. We're going to take those pictures. We are going to put up a poll. Each week, we're going to try to have at least three or four that you get to choose from. The winner of that week, we're going to print it out. That porta potty gets to go on your, on Kate's pump room. Mm -hmm. And then we'll do another one at the end of the month. And we will put the winner of the porta potty art on a t-shirt. I love it. 
I love ZBT it. ZBT art. Or you could get art. your porta potty. And it's You're trying be- to make that's a shitty name. I know. I'm spitballing right I now. I said porta johns. That's a great but, yeah, but name. I don't want. I don't want. I don't want to relegate it to just porta johns because I think there's other artwork out there that we're missing. If Long we just story say short, send me your best military graffiti. Your best military graffiti, whether you drew it or someone else did. Or tattoos. Send yes. zero block thirty. See? Or tattoos. Yeah. Send any of it to the at zero block thirty account, and it might wind up on the wall where I look at while I'm, I'm pumping my nipples. <laughs> hmm. Speaking of round number three, phallic art. Sarah's card of the Military Times did this one, and it is all about dick art. Yeah. Classic military tales all the time. She says, "When I was eighteen, I don't like when people say phallic art. Just say dick art. Dick art." Descartes. Being so fancy. Descartes. Mm. Descartes. 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 Yeah, but that word phallic, that's that's a fun word. Phallic, that's a cool that word. word if you roll the L's. Phallic. Oh, the Spanish way. Anyways, Sarah Zacard says when I was 18. The old my rolled f- L's. The old rolled L's. <laughs> my family that's went out of town, and I threw a house party that resulted in a lost cat, a bubble party in my parents' jacuzzi, and last but not least, a tiny Sharpie drawn penis on the wall of the garage. My dad, a Navy pilot, found it so funny that he decided to leave it there until my parents sold the house a decade later. Hmm. His appreciation for phallic drawings, I can only assume, is a vestige of his time served. I think that military tradition that goes back further than anyone can remember, veteran and morale patch connoisseur Dan Santoro told Observation Post, you'll see like old things like on Hardian's wall, there's a dick drawn on it. I don't know enough about military history, but I'm assuming Hardian's wall, Hadrian's wall. Is from a long battle of long ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, stolen Valor <laughs> Katie here. Santoro, who spent six years as crew chief in the Air Force, now draws, we'll just say dick instead of Valric, uh, now draws dick morale patches and recently released a book titled Patches, in parentheses, with genitals on them, which can be purchased on his site. I think I'm just another guy in a long line of military dick drawing traditions. And ladies, I used to draw dicks in Porta Johns all the time. Santoro now fixes ma- microscopes for a living. Would love to have him on here about that. Fixing microscopes for a living. Would you? But likes to doodle. That's something that you want to get into? Well, I sure like Those to. Those microscopes. Well, I sure I like to. They've been busting all over the place. I'm How just do we saying do this? I'd like to take a closer look at it. Oh, okay. Mm. Anyways, he likes to doodle as a hobby. I don't spend too much time on things because I get bored really easily. That's why most of my stuff's just tiny little drawings. And that's a great example of take something you love that you do on the side Mm -hmm. and make something cool out of it. I always love the stories of when somebody takes some, when you're able to monetize something else that other people are really good at Mm -hmm. and you just get to get all the credit. Like this guy's curating pictures of dicks and then he gets money from it well he does his own art if you go on at pizza strike on instagram he has done some really great patches so like 49th fighter training squadron is this great guy in a mullet with huge sunglasses on drinking a pbr with an earring i don't know they're just the born in a gay bar philadelphia but PA, didn't they ruin that didn't the military kind of ruin that because they didn't they recently say you can't have specific unit art like flags and all that stuff too when but did th- they say this that? This is just a guy doing it for fun. No, I, I know, oh. but I'm saying it would have been awesome because the, the Marines were never this way, but the Air Force and the Army, I believe you guys could do it too. You can have like a morale patch. Yes. And it would basically be like anything you want. Anything you want, yep. Like if you had these and you had like a helicopter squadron with dicks swinging around instead mm-hmm. of blades, incredible. What a hoot. <laughs> well, follow at Pizza Strike on Instagram. His patches really are there. I was scrolling through and I just had a really fun time looking at them all and you can get his book. His link to his site is on his Instagram page. There's a great embrace the suck patch that bites off a little more than it can chew. There is a motorbite motorboating eagle and there's 69 of his favorite patches in the book naturally. So yeah, it's just good stuff. Uh, it's a treat. I once did my own cartoon yeah. uh, called EAS University about being a noob veteran back in college, but I can no longer find the website that I did it on. Damn. So uh, it's gone. That stinks. Yeah. This, so it's uh, out there I'm somewhere. Out this Anything d- you still got access to that motivational account that you used to do? <laughs> uh, at hard for motivation? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Still still putting things on there from time to time. <laughs> oh, really? You got a burner that you, you operate? I have a burner. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that website is, or that account is so bad. <laughs> It's terrible. I mean, but there's a lot of things that you forget after working in this job, like things that people are like, oh, that must have stuck. Their first idea, oh, no. Well, I had a lot of iterations of things that I did to try to make a successful Twitter account, one of which was grading tweets. And yeah. I thought it was a hilarious idea. I had an account. It was my current account, and I just changed the name to grading tweets. And I would just go through other tweets and be like, B plus, B minus. And I was like, smart. this is going to be huge. Yeah, I think it that's was really not. good. This is it. 
This is this is what takes this, you this to the next level. Be. Somebody found a website that I used to talk about fitness stuff when I first got out of the Marine Corps. No, you didn't. Yeah. Oh yeah. What talk, did you talk about? My workout of the day, what I was eating, what I was getting into. Oh my if God. people need tips. Oh my God! Mm. Present day chaps would Dude. kick that guy's ass. Well, you just gotta. I mean, you gotta find something whenever you get out. You don't like. You never know the first thing's gonna stick. I just wanted to do something entertaining, <laughs> and I looked back. I was like, "This is fucking terrible." Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. All right, well, let's move on to round number four. This one is the badass of the week. This dude, I had never heard that story. First of all, in runs, I know you probably, maybe at West Point, I don't know how officers do it in the Army. Did you ever, were you ever the flag bearer on, like, whenever you were running in, like, a formation run? Yes. Mm-hmm. We what? had him. Big nerd. You did? Yeah, we had guy on, yeah. Yeah, so what did you do, Kate? Uh, at boot camp on family day, the big run you do in Whoa. the morning. I was a flag, and my dad was trying to videotape it, and he was standing on a fire ant hill. And so instead of me running by with the flag, you hear him going, oh, God damn, dog, dog, and the camera <laughs> swirls all around, and then it's his feet. We need that video. Yeah, that we shit, still have it. We that shit have. out of, like, America's Funniest yep. Home Videos type. Yep. I'm so proud of you. Yeah. Like, yeah. Ah, yeah, we still have it. His legs were tore up. And it sucks is that was when you're, like, a size zero. Yep. Mm-hmm. And not, like, what? deleting pictures. Of, like, when you're in the best shape of your life is so painful. It's hard. Like, God, there's pictures of I'll me when I was it. in really good shape. I can't find them on an old computer. I probably uh, threw it away. Oh, there's this great picture of me standing by the San Diego Bay with Madonna, Michelle Obama arms from the military where I'm just, I'm in this sundress and I'm fucking ripped. Yeah, but you know what? You're, <laughs> you're sick. I, I like your peak <laughs> fitness is Michelle Obama. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, sick. You would agree you're a, a, you know. I was looking like a 45-year-old Michelle Obama. I was fucking... I was looking like a mother of I two. I so good. The picture yeah. of health. Uh-huh. I feel like you could get back to that very easily, though. Because I think you're naturally pretty pretty thin. If I ever... Try, should I get fucking ripped this summer? Yeah. Like, like bodybuilder ripped? Fuck yeah. Should I That'd try? That'd be cool. Okay. Katie Tybo. All right. All right. <laughs> do it. Get in shape, but do it with a fitness program from like the 80s. Okay. Yeah. Like do like Richard like Simmons shit. Jane right. Fonda, Richard Simmons. Basically Maybe get Suzanne just, Summers, the thigh master. Just do the, I mean, or you could just start doing TikTok videos. You worked your out, you worked out like a motherfucker when you were trying to nail those TikTok Took dances. Took me four hours. All right. Noted. All right. Let's move on to round number four. We have a little bit of a badass of a week. I, I asked the question about the Guidon because that's essentially what this dude did. So on May 22nd of 1863, old Grant launched a major assault against Vicksburg. Higgins, the guy that got the Medal of Honor, volunteered to act as the color bearer for his regiment on that day as the acting color bearer had, had been previously wounded. Higgins Regiment, the 99th of Illinois, and four other Union regiments attacked the section in the Vicksburg defenses held by the 2nd Texas Infantry which succeeded in repulsing the the attack back. According to one of its members, Charles Evans, after the assault was beaten back, a color bearer, who was Higgins, continued to advance towards the Confederate lines. Seeing this, at least 100 men took deliberate aim at him and fired at point-blank range. Yet Higgins was not hit. When they saw that he did not falter, the Texans then ceased firing upon him and started to cheer for him (laughs) <laughs> for Wiggins coming on closely, who safely reached the breastworks and was congratulated by them. Higgins was then interrogated by the Vicksburg garrison commander, but refused to give any solid information about Grant's arming. He was paroled and exchanged a few days later, rejoining the 99th Illinois. He stayed with the regiment until the end of the war. At the request of his captors, Higgins received the Medal of Honor. Whoa. The request of his captors? Yes, yeah, so the, the so group they- the, from the Confederacy, from the Texas Infantry, saw what he did. I mean, how this has got to be. I wish we had video mm. of this. That's wild. Yeah. Can I say something? Well, you're going to write oh, this down. Don't you ruin this. Don't, yeah, don't, ruin don't it. you poo poo this. Don't you. Part dare. of me thinks that the Texas Confederates put him up for the Medal of Honor because they couldn't believe how shitty of a shot they were. That Ooh, they had to say, that oh, is embarrassing. he must be really, really zone. good I mean, if we couldn't hit him. You might be right. Like, a right. hundred people trying to shoot at you. And they all missed. And you're coming at them. It's not like you're running away. It's, like, so. reversed of when, like, the Battle of the Bastards. Right. Like, it's completely, like, he's running towards you and you can't hit him. So it might be easier for them to say, wow, he's really something special if we couldn't get him. We but I would him. never be, mm. even if I missed, I'm not cheering for you. If you're running at if me. If you did why? enough of a juke and you did a cool spin move, I'd cheer for you. No. If you why would right? you then just try to like hit him with the buttstock of your rifle once he reaches Because I bet yeah, Reagan's... you can't. And how does it. That's got to be like the first ever documented war slow clap. Because it's got to be like boom, 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 boom. We're trying to shoot you. Okay. That's kind of impressive. 
He had to have done some <laughs> like the entire lines Heisman like yeah! football type move. Like he, there had to be spins. He had to have been giving razzle dazzle. Like at some point, he couldn't believe he wasn't dead yet, and so he started doing cartwheels. He started spinning the flag around. He started doing shit. I have to imagine that really blew him away. <laughs> the garrison commander there must have been like, so when you had the colors and you brought them over here, that was. was. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Did we just become best friends? That was that fucking was so sick. sick. Oh my. Yeah. I yeah. only thing I yeah. think of weren't this Michael might be Sh- the least brave Medal of Honor recipient of all time. Yeah, not, like the again. least accomplished. Not the least brave, but yeah. least accomplished. What does he fucking accomplish here? Yeah, he just he put a flag over there. Cool. Yeah, he just ran and put a flag down and didn't get hit. Because also, weren't rifles a lot less accurate back then? Because yeah. the bore wasn't it was a, bo- a ball. Yeah. yeah so it was, it was essentially like and... a shotgun yeah. muzzle, well... and it, it would just run, run around. But also think oh. of the morale <laughs> impact if if you're with the union and you see this guy going past a hundred Confederates, boo, boo. <laughs> but, but, but it, then your confidence level, holy shit, he just went by a hundred and didn't get hit. Let's fucking go. We're fucking in the clear. Think what of the morale. So what is it about? Why exactly. are we? Not, they're like cover and concealment. We what don't need that shit. Uh, Let's fucking stand out there. They couldn't hit old Bob. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what did his end, his end zone dance look like when he got to the other side? Dan Sanders high step, easy. He you pulled so? a cell phone out from under the goalpost <laughs> and he called his mom. He was like, "Mom, hey, what's up, Instagram? It's big time, AZ. <laughs> yeah, here's Wiggins. my thought of the day. Yeah, I, don't know, so I, I think it's pretty like sick. Like an oh. old school barbershop quartet? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I can see that. I don't know. I can see that. Like waving back at his pals. You smell fantastic, by the way. Thank you. Khan's just did a dance that wafted uh, wafted his him around. Yeah. It's a nice thing where Khan's wafts something and it's <laughs> yeah, not bad. It's not yeah, bad, right. It's Unlike true. the trip to Daytona. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to think <sighs> about it. Never All right, forget. let's move on to save rounds and alibis. Kate, we'll start with you. What do you got? I don't think I have anything. This is my first week back at work, and I have only come in two days out of four so far. It's harder than I thought it was going to be. Why? So shout out to just because there's no he's not on a schedule yet. Mm. So it's so hard to create a schedule right. based around because we thought we'd be able to like just pass them off to one another and mm-hmm. get work done. But it's it's fucking hard. You'll figure it out. Yeah, so, so let's we'll put you in the position of like somebody from Norway. Mm-hmm. OK, they get two years. What? Of the military gets 16 weeks or something like that. Now a year. Six months. They're trying to do a year. The, yeah. the Marine Corps does a year. What? Wow. Wow. That's awesome but for the Marine Corps. Yeah, yeah. I think it's implemented. If not, it was something that was the commandant's recommending. Mm-hmm. Like that they actually do for a year. Yeah. Two years in Norway. I don't want to stay home for two years. It's two years for the mother and one year for the father. Wow. That's yeah. That seems it excessive. Out. Like, how do you get adjusted back? To work life. Right. Like, like, I understand like the it is great like having family be like a priority yes. and that's one of the offsets of socialism there, the way that they do it, like how much people are taxed. They have that ability to do that. But if you're in a job like this, Kate takes off for two years, we might as well just close up shop. Yeah, there's no yeah. <laughs> Any it job. On you go you away do. for ten, two years, they're not waiting for you to get back. They're not like halting that work. Somebody else is gonna pick Every, up and start doing that work. Marketing has got to be completely different. Like even if you work in marketing, yeah. the the real estate market, anything. There is nothing that stays stagnant for two years. No. Yeah. Even That's... food, even if you're like a chef. Like the way that you cook has got to be different two years from now. Yeah. Well, I think the military way. is probably the only space that I can think of off the top of my head where you could disappear and come back and like, okay, everything's pretty much What if much you left in like 2005 and you're like, well, by the time I get back in two years, surely this war is going to be over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next nope. thing you know, you got fucking eight kids and it's still going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but no, it's it's been good. I'll f- figure it out, but definitely still working on figuring that out and all that jazz. But other than that, it's nice. You brought me my favorite slice of pizza today, chaps. You dragged mm. a, a booby milk fridge up to the second floor, <laughs> so we're really crushing it. Thank you. But yeah, yeah, that's Cons, it for me. What, what about you? Um, so I tweeted about this uh, tomorrow. As you're listening, Saturday, I'm going up to West Point. Uh, the the gentleman behind uh, Army Barstool. For the last few years is graduating a Again. delightful gentleman i must yes, say indeed. yes indeed uh and that's big of you to say because he made he a lot of crayon lot. jokes yeah he made, and and he called me out for a co- many mistakes i've made online so anyway well, anyway um he asked me <laughs> fuck that guy yeah fuck that guy i hate that guy <laughs> that uh, fucking boot. yeah fucking boot yeah he uh, asked me to uh, commission mm-hmm. him so i get to to go there and and put his right hand my right hand up and I'm pretty sure I got it memorized now. I so. wish you would do a commissioning joke where he's like, oh, you asked me a commission and you just bring like a picture of him that you drew. 
Tell me about that. He was commissioned. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like commissioned uh, to, yeah. to well, purge uh, rock. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's good oh, stuff. no, I completely misunderstood what your request Sorry was. Sorry about mm-hmm. that. Yeah. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. No, but it is a really big honor to get asked to do something like that. And it's a very important day for him. So uh, not sure why he asked me, but I'm very honored that he did ask me. So very that's cool. pretty cool. And then. Uh, Probably because COVID. Mm-hmm. Probably. Yeah, there yeah. was nobody else. Right. Mm-hmm. And I was close. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's probably why. Mm-hmm. Well, anyway. Uh, so before we were recording, I was uh, I, I love pictures, so I, I love the app Time Hop and, and getting reminded of things. Yeah, and I love just a, a huge generality. I love pictures. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like when Kate was like, "I'm getting back into music." Yeah, 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 yeah. This music thing I might really catch breathing. on. Yeah. So, but uh, <laughs> you guys had food. <laughs> yeah, love wow. that shit. Chewing it. <laughs> you guys heard of television? Yeah. <laughs> I love entertainment. Yeah. You guys like shows? Yeah. Big entertainment. You ever seen a person? <laughs> I love visuals. I love looking at stuff. I love big on rainbows. Yeah. Uh, but so one of the pictures today kind of like stopped me in my tracks. Usually I just like flash through it and unless something's like real funny, I just kind of get through it for the day. Yeah. But today I was going through and one of the pictures was a picture of my rear view mirror. Ten years ago today. I was leaving Fort Hood, Mm -hmm. leaving active duty. Whoa. Yeah. Doesn't that make you feel old as fuck that you've been out for a decade? No, because. It should. Dude, it doesn't feel like. (laughs) It should. Like these 10, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people could say this, but these last 10 years just kind of flew by. And when I think about all the stuff I've done, places I've been, people I've met, great experiences, I'm like really fortunate, but it doesn't feel like 10 years. So it was just uh, really cool to kind of reflect on that. I had yeah. the same one. I was talking to somebody not in the same military vein, but I was telling them, in four years, I will be a dad for half my life. Yeah. Whoa. Holy shit. Time's weird. Mm-hmm. But no, I was I was reminiscing on it and some of the things I've done since then. I was kind of getting a little choked up thinking about it. It's, it's, it's wild, man. Think, what if, think about both of you. Think about what, everything that's happened in your life in the last 10 years. I got a divorce. Yeah. You got a divorce Sick. and a kid. And a kid. What a treat. Uh, me, I'm officially 10 years. I'm like 15 years away from that, which is uh, great. But I have McCartney. Yeah. There you go. There you so go. Just, just crazy. Crazy. Mm. So crazy. that's all I got. Nick? This was my first day on uh, public transportation in about a year. Yeah. It's, yeah. We- it's weird, right? It's uh, very strange. It wasn't as crowded, so I don't hate it. But yeah. I, I've, uh, I fear that's going to change. Yeah, soon. Months, yeah. I know. I'm kind of dreading that, too. Enjoy it while we can. Mm, nothing for me. I'm excited to go back home, see, him, see the squad. Baby Dale's been being bad as shit. Why? What's he been doing? Peeing in the house, fucking <gasps> shitting in my closet. What? Like being just very upset. What? Yeah, Baby Dale's acting. I had to FaceTime him with yesterday and talk to him and be like, look, Baby Dale, I'm going to come back. And when I come back, I am going to rub your face in the things that you're doing. The, how much do you think FaceTime resonates with animals? Oh, absolutely zero. Yeah. None. Even they though might, it's your voice, it's your face. They might know face. the sound, but it's like, a, they just, I think they just think it's like TV. Yeah. They're like, oh, well, some, dad's in the phone again. <laughs> dad's trapped in that box again. But he can't do anything to me. He can't <laughs> spank me from here. <laughs> no? Okay. That's it. All right, All we'll right. be back on Tuesday. It's on the retreat.